We are on moderate terrain on a glacier. What are our considerations for if and how to use a simul climbing running belay for our rope team? Hi there everyone, I'm Jason. We are continuing our glacier travel series for which there's a link in the description. Today we are talking about placing protection on the glacier yep. and what is often called a running belay. But this isn't always the best technique for a given circumstance and it needs to be deployed intentionally. Let's get into when it may or may not make sense. But first, what is a running belay? Well, it's a form of simul climbing. In a typical scenario on snow, you might have a lead climber carrying a few pieces of snow protection. They place those pieces of protection behind themselves, keeping that probe between themselves and the middle climber. When a middle climber comes to the protection, they call out pro, pro, which signals the lead climber to place another piece of protection. Meanwhile, the middle climber will clip through, leaving the piece between themselves and the following climber. But now there is another piece just placed that is again between the middle climber and the lead. When the last climber reaches any pro, they remove it. Oh, and you can check out a short we did about efficiently clipping through, as well as a full video on picket placements to help match placement styles to conditions. Links are in the description. The team will then either belay themselves into a group and give the gear back to the lead climber, and you can watch last week's video on the fundamentals of moving as a rope team to learn more about why we keep each other on belay when we come together. Or the team may move the last climber into the lead position to swap leads. The idea is that the lower fall forces on the moderate terrain can be withstood by the snow protection in place. We've added some safety margin in case of a fall, but it's not without risks. Let's get more specific about some of those downsides. The first, of course, is that the snow conditions need to be such that the snow protection can take the forces of a fall. If we have bad snow, we're just wasting time, which leads to a second downside. A running belay will dramatically slow the progress of the team. There is the time for placing and clipping gear, but also if every person on the team is carrying one picket that we pull together for the lead, that means we can go one rope length before we run out of pickets and then need to bring the whole team together to pass the lead or swap gear. it's just considerably slower, as you can see. A third downside is that we've increased the likelihood of a leader fall because they have whatever their risk is of a self-induced fall, plus if any other climber falls, it has the potential to yank the lead off of their feet. You can reduce this third downside by placing some type of rope capture device like a micro traction at the placement, which allows the rope to pull forward but keeps a backward tug from a falling second climber from being able to tug the rope of the lead climber. But now we are using more time and equipment at each placement. Plus, these types of devices are only typically rated to about four kilonewtons, so we may want to add a new placement soon after the rope capture placement so that the capture device doesn't take the lead fall. Now, that's even more equipment to carry and place. Finally, we also won't be able to use brake knots on our rope as they will get stuck at the clip points. And you can watch our video on roping up to see why brake knots are sometimes a good idea. So when does it make sense to climb without a running belay versus with a running belay or versus switching for fully pitched out climbing? If we were to get steeper, which is rare on snow but can happen, when cresting ridges or when crossing over bridge runs, pitching it out might make sense. A particularly risky crevasse crossing might also call for an anchor and traditional belay, which is something we will go deeper into in our next video. In essence, if the odds of a lead fall are going up and we don't want to add to those odds by having following climbers in a position to pull off the lead climber, then setting up an anchor and climbing a classic pitch might be the better option. 
And then there are circumstances on the other end of the spectrum. What if the odds of falling were lower? Then we need to ask if we want to spend the time placing the pro. Here it may come down to every team member's ability to arrest a fall. If we have a team member who is not reliably able to arrest, then if they slip, they can pull the whole team down if there is no protection in place. Or regardless of ability, if we have snow conditions such as hard snow, that might make arrest difficult to impossible. Or if we have terrain that is so steep that arresting is unlikely, we end up with a high potential for one person's fall pulling down the entire team if we don't have any pro in place or don't pitch it out. Like any technique, a running belay has its place, but it is imperfect. Its trade-offs need to be thought through in relation to the team's skills, the conditions, the terrain, and the situation. We used a running belay for sections of hard snow on Denali. Have you ever employed this technique? Tell us where you were in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share if you want to support us. For more information, you can go to our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. You can check out that video I mentioned about snow anchor placements, or you can check out our entire glacier travel series. We'll see you next week, and keep on getting more out of that big outside.